Hello and welcome to the Chateau de la Lande. This week I would like to tell you all about the restoration of our Grand Salon where I am sitting now. Somebody was asking me in the comments which was the hardest room to tackle and it was definitely this one. Although the sitting room was actually rather nicely decorated when we moved in, it was only half the size that it is now. And even if we'd wanted to leave it exactly as it was, we couldn't because all of the outside walls were lined with asbestos. Obviously, before decorating, we needed to remove all of that asbestos. The whole layout of the room was also really quite strange. There was a huge dividing wall splitting the whole room in two and one half was being used as a laundry room, which seemed really bizarre. Perhaps if I'd known back then what I know now about how much time I actually do spend in the laundry room, I would have understood that decision much more. So I decided that I would put the room back to the proportions that it would have had originally. Luckily, they were not supporting walls, so we whipped them out and thereby created a massive amount of mess. It was really, really hard for my mother in those days because my mother does not like building work. She does not like dust. For my father and I, it was really easy because there's nothing we like more than seeing a wall come down and seeing how the light changes in a space. We both had this way of seeing it finished, so we didn't really live with the reality of it. And now when I look back and see photos at the worst of it, I can't really remember it looking like that. The asbestos was taken away by special convoy. And once that had gone, we could really focus on starting to put the whole room back together again. I couldn't then, and I still can't, afford to put beautiful panelling in the room. I very much want to one day. And so as a holding measure, we decided to paint it. And we've painted it Gervais Yellow by Farrow and Ball which I love because it's warm and it works equally well in summer and in winter. Obviously, once we'd taken down the dividing wall, we were left with completely unmatching floors on both sides. So we just had a mess of earth flooring. I decided to use that as an opportunity to put in underfloor heating. So the entire Grand Salon has underfloor heating, but it has to be said that the low point of the entire chateau renovation for us was probably the moment that there was a mini digger in the house, <laughs> digging up the floors for the underfloor heating. Every room of the house just had a layer of dust on it. It was quite miserable, but it was exciting too. We had a very tight budget and everything that we had had to go on big building works. We needed to put in all of the electrics, all of the plumbing, a central heating system, a septic tank. I knew that it was very important that the money that I had went towards things that I would not be able to change in the future. The floors, <laughs> that's, that's a once in a lifetime job. So I spent a very long time thinking about the floors. My decision was finally made because in the attic we had lovely terracotta floors. They were in a very bad state but we had all of the lovely tiles and I knew that in the future we were going to insulate on top of those floorings and so they wouldn't be seen anymore. But we didn't have enough to do the entire ground floor and the Grand Salon is by far the biggest room at about 80 square meters. So I sourced some tiles from all over France and in the Grand Salon I decided to hide the fact that we were using two different types of terracotta floor tiles by making a carpet design. The center of the room has one type of tile going in a diagonal formation and the outside of the room has a border of tiles going in a straight formation. And what's really adorable is that some of the old terracotta tiles that we brought down from the attic still have the paw prints of dogs and cats that walked over them as they were drying hundreds of years ago. I've made sure that those tiles are in areas where we can see them very clearly as we're walking through the house and they're the little ghost cats of yesteryear. So I think the floors have been a big success here. And the lovely thing is that when people arrive, they think that the floors have been like this for hundreds of years. So that's exactly the look that I was going for. One of the really lovely discoveries that we made in this room during the renovations was the ceiling, because there was a plaster ceiling that had been put up in the 19th century, which obviously came down as we took the walls down. And underneath, we realized that we had what in France is called a plafond à la française, which is a ceiling in the French style. And this is the pattern of ceilings that you see in palaces like Fontainebleau. They used it a lot in the Renaissance. You have cross beams and then beams going towards them. And it's very beautiful and it gave us a lot more ceiling height. Problem was, 
that the ceiling below was in a real state and we knew that it needed to be painted but it was such a huge job and for several years we lived with just furniture in the room everything else done and the ceiling which my friend Nick and co-owner called the elephant in the room well we finally got round to it it's beautiful now though it's not finished because just like the ceilings in Fontainebleau one day I would like to paint the ceiling so that every beam has beautiful golden patterns going along it. We planned a grand mask ball to unveil the chateau to my friends who hadn't been here at that point. The flooring we could walk on for the first time the day of the party. The day before we were still waiting for everything to dry properly and also the day of the party was the first day that we could use a septic tank. So I was even more worried about that because I had all of my friends arriving and it really wasn't certain the septic tank was going to be in on time so that was tricky we moved all the furniture in on the day of the party and realized it still looked completely empty but it didn't matter at all I still have such happy memories of that party my father was still alive and he loved it here and everyone had a wonderful time in the years since that first mask ball I've started to decorate the room properly and add more and more until finally I've reached a stage where at least it does feel finished even though I know it's not this room is filled with my father's paintings I realize that for a lot of people it's too contemporary for a chateau and I understand that view completely but for me, I love this mixture of different periods. I love the bright happiness of my father's paintings. I, I always have loved that mixture of Picasso's next to an 18th century console. And it's much more energetic and vibrant to mix things like this. The huge painting that dominates the room is of the house that I grew up in. It's called Cransford Hall. And it was the nursing home that my parents made for people with Alzheimer's. And I lived in the attic. It was a very happy childhood and I'm reminded of that every time I look at this painting. At the moment, slightly strangely, below my father's amazing painting is the billiard table that's original to this chateau. It was in the room next door, our billiard room, and it stayed there for 10 years. And at the end of 10 years, we realized that we had played billiards three times and weren't using that room at all. So we've turned that room, which I'll show you another time, into our winter salon. And for now, it is living in the Grand Salon because it's the only place that has enough space to keep it. The furniture and objects in this room bring back so many memories to me. My father bought the sofa that I'm sitting on. It's one of a pair. The other one is just behind it, facing the other way in the room. And he bought them at auction for me in England. They're by the British manufacturer Dudgeon. And 15 years after he bought them secondhand, they're as comfortable as they were at the very beginning. Everything that my father bought for me is very precious because we were incredibly close. We use this marble topped cupboard as our bar in the Grand Salon. I bought it in a little antique shop in Eye in Suffolk and I find it so pretty. It's got a slightly 1930s air to it, but I don't mind this mixture of different periods in the room. I think that works better. I love a room to feel as though it's just been added to by different generations over time and that it's not from a single fixed point in history. Inside, I keep all of our glasses for cocktails. I have the decanters on top and over it is a beautiful painting by my father. I think one of my favorites of his. I love the colors and underneath his painting is an alabaster lamp that my parents gave to me. The piano was my 15th birthday present from my parents because I had singing lessons very regularly and my singing teacher also taught her other pupils at my parents' house. It reminds me of my parents. It also sadly reminds me of the fact that I can't play the piano very well, though I'm definitely trying to get better now. But my piano teacher, when I was a child, took my mother to one side one day and said, I am perfectly happy to continue to take your money if you are perfectly happy to continue to waste it. And finally, that comment is what freed me of my hated piano lessons. Weirdly, I enjoy playing the piano a lot more now and I think I would love to have lessons now. But the piano has been incredibly useful for me. We've had many concerts in here over the years. Well, this is a really old photo and I'm wearing the same dress that I'm wearing today. Oh well, waste not, want not. This corner is a little quirky. The chest was a gift from my mother. 
and on it is an almost life-size statue of the Virgin and Child. And I understand most people probably don't have almost life-size statues of the Virgin and Child in their sitting room, but she is so beautiful. She was a gift to me from my aunt, who is also my godmother, and I absolutely cherish this statue. This small painting really reminds me of my mother. I don't know why, but I think Daddy must have been inspired by my mother for this one. And under the painting is a lovely little card table. I love this little games table. On one side, it's a chess board, but if you flip the top, on the other side, it's a backgammon board. It's actually really useful. I honestly don't play chess, but a lot of my friends play chess and a lot of the volunteers who stay here use that table to play chess in the evening. But although a lot of the furniture is from my parents, quite a lot of it I bought myself at various auctions and brocantes over the years. The very first piece was the secrétaire, which I bought long before I even had the chateau. I think I must have been about 17 or 18 years old, and my father took me to the local auction in Suffolk, and I saw this secrétaire. Now, I had no house, I had nowhere to put it, but I completely fell in love with it. It's just a joy. It has this beautiful design on the front of a knight and his horse with a woman, and they're standing against some palm trees, so it has an exotic touch, and it's all in the French Empire style. And when you open it, it's a joy, because with the painted and golden decoration on the outside, you don't expect this wonderful, rich wood interior. It's one of my favorite things in the interior entire house. I bought this lovely table and the lamps on it at auction in Angel, where I live when I'm in London. For a long time I didn't have any lampshades for it, and then I finally had two made when I was in Venice. I went to a beautiful little shop that make lampshades to measure, and I chose a lovely Venetian Fortuny fabric for them. On the table is the writing box that my father bought for my mother one Christmas. I've always been fascinated by this object because it has lots of little secret compartments. And I just imagine living in the 19th century and having lots of love letters stored away in it. I mean, admittedly nowadays, all love letters are in email form and I think that that loses a bit of the charm. You see, if you open it, you can move this away and then if you put this little metal implement down here, the whole front springs off and there's tiny hidden drawers behind. What to put in them? Very few pieces in this room are original to the chateau, but there are a couple. There's this tiny little chair so small, for a long time we thought maybe it was a child's chair, but I realise now it's almost certainly the base of a chaise longue brisée, as they call them in France, where instead of having one long piece, it comes into two and then the pieces can be used separately. And I suspect it's therefore half of a chaise longue. And one of my favourite things in the room is the mirror over the mantelpiece. This was originally in my bedroom at Lalande, which was the bedroom of the Countess. And it's such a beautiful mirror that although I love it, I didn't feel justified in keeping it in my bedroom because I wanted everybody to be able to see it. I love the fact that it's a very whimsical decorative style that started in the 18th century in France, where instead of having crossed swords and shields and helmets, gardening implements would be used instead. And I love that playful edge. So we have a garden fork or spade, shears, it's beautiful. And that really represents Lalande to me. It's very much love and not war and nature and not city. My father bought me the beautiful bust that's on the chimney piece. I don't know what it is, but I'm so drawn to her. He found her at auction and he absolutely loved her as well. And from the moment the room was ready, she's been in this space spot at the heart of it. But what's very strange is very shortly after my father's death, my mother and I went on holiday in Malta just to get away from it all. And we went to visit a beautiful mini palace in the heart of Valletta called the Casa Rocca Piccola. And inside there was an extremely similar bust. And that's made me want to look into where she's from. If any of you know anything about the history of this bust, I would love to hear about it. And I can't talk about this room without talking about one of my biggest loves, the fabrics. When this room was finally ready to decorate, 
One of the biggest decisions for me was what fabric to use. The curtains make such a big difference to a room. The fabric is kind of the soul of a room. It was a very important and big decision to make because I needed over 100 meters of fabric for this room. There are five huge windows that go from floor to ceiling and I could not afford to get this decision wrong. So I chose a fabric by Watts of Westminster, which is called Holbein and it's spectacular. Watts of Westminster were founded in 1874 and in the 1880s the pattern was used in a dressing room at Ham House in Richmond and at Windsor Castle. It's a silk fabric with golden thread. It catches the light in summer, especially in this room, but in winter when we have the curtains closed, all of the little lights inside the room and the lamps and the fairy lights on the Christmas tree just glint against the gold of the fabric. It feels extremely luxurious. The fabric below it is actually exactly the same fabric, but in a simple cream and that allows the light to come through. So the two together play with the light beautifully. I'm so happy that I chose these curtains. I still absolutely love them. I also use cushions as a way of adding beautiful fabric designs to a room. And I'm forever playing with the cushions around the house, moving them from room to room, adding different colors. And it's a really easy way of making a huge visual impact. But at the moment, my favorite cushion in this room is definitely this one. It is La Grande Mademoiselle, who was the owner of this chateau back in the 17th century, though we have no idea whether she ever even visited it. That's something I'm trying to find out. She was the richest heiress in Europe. There were many sumptuous portraits made of her, and this is one of my favorites. It was a gift from someone who watches this vlog, and I'm so incredibly grateful for it. I'm happy every time I walk into this room and I see her, and I realize I have a lot to live up to as the owner of this chateau. As always in La Lande, this room is not finished and there's so many things that I still want to do here. I want to continue to paint the ceiling with beautiful golden decorations. I would like to buy wooden paneling for the walls, but it's gonna take a little while before I can do that. But it's fun that it's not finished. It's nice that I can keep adding to it over the years. It's a constant project that I can tweak. This room is used a lot, but mainly in summer because it has these beautiful doors straight onto the terrace with incredible views. It's a wonderful place to be in summer. We've had so many parties in this room over the years and each time we try to transform it in a different way. Once we even turned it into a lavish tent for our Bollywood party. Thank you for joining me on a Sunday again. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe and I'll be showing you lots more rooms in the Chateau in future and telling you more about Chateau life. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic Sunday and I'll see you next week.